I was pondering a bunch of different video to, video ideas today, and uh, I got this. Uh, the thought of this uh, video came up in my mind to talk a little on it. It's usually around this time of year, every year, where I hear something on YouTube about the end times and it's not exactly a biblically accurate prediction or it's just flat out unbiblical nonsense. But uh, this guy, I believe, did it right. Uh, I'm only going to play like the first few minutes of his video out loud. And if you guys want to you know, watch the rest of the video for yourselves. I will put a link in the description for it. Anyway, here it is. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but I hope you can hear it well enough. Bless you. Welcome back to my channel. I'm excited for today's video. I know that God is going to speak to your life. I want to be talking about the subject, juggling prophets. And why am I calling it juggling prophets? Because there's so many people who are juggling so many things in front of you just to get your attention. Have sensational topics just to get your attention. You're never going to believe what God showed me about the rapture. Scary dream about hell. Scary dream about the rapture. And let me tell you something. Jesus, Peter, and the Apostle Paul knew the most about hell and knew the most about the rapture. But do you know that's not what their ministry focused on? Their ministry focused on one thing. Jesus, Paul, and Peter. Their ministry focused on one thing. And what was it? Preaching the gospel of what Jesus Christ was going to do for us on the cross. Jesus knew the most about hell and the rapture but he preached about what he was going to do for us on the cross, the cleansing and the freedom that he was going to give us. Peter knew the most about hell and the rapture, but what did he preach about? What Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. The apostle Paul knew more about the rapture and more about hell than a lot of the other apostles, but what did his ministry focus on? He said this, when I was amongst you, I didn't want to know anything else but only the cross and what Jesus did for us on that cross. I want to tell you something, don't get distracted. So I'm going to talk about two things in this video that I know are going to bless your life and are going to teach us not to get distracted from the main goal. And what is the main goal? The gospel of Jesus Christ. I honestly couldn't have said that better myself. And uh, in fact, I think the only better statement will come straight out of the Bible itself. In Mark chapter 13... I'm going to start in verse 26 this time, all the way to the end of the chapter. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, and he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Of that day and the hour knoweth no man, the Bible says. Neither the angels in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father only. Because it's not important to the main goal that Christ has given us. This watch, this, this command to watch. This is a command to watch for Christ, yes, and to watch the signs but it's not it shouldn't be our main focus because we hear and hear about that about that day and hour no one knows not even the angels in heaven nor the sun but only the father be on guard be alert you do not know when that time will come 
It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each one with their assigned task. Our assigned task on earth is the Great Commission. It is not to watch for the end times. It is not to fear-monger people about the end times and to receiving Jesus as their Lord and Savior because the fear-mongering and talking about the end of the world, it really just creates false converts. And the signs we were given to watch for, it might tell us when the end times are getting close. It might tell, you know, when the tribulation is going to come, but at the end of the day, no one knows when the when Christ's return is actually going to be. And will this be a very fearful day for those who aren't in Christ? Yes, it will. Because then they're going to face their eternal punishment. But for us believers, it's something to look forward to. It's the day when we're finally taken from this world of suffering and being brought to live in heaven with Christ forever. And our main goal here on earth is to witness the gospel to a dying world. The Bible doesn't talk about, you know, heaven and hell much. It does talk about it some, but not much. Jesus didn't, it wasn't Jesus' focus. It wasn't, and like the guy on YouTube said, it wasn't the Apostle Paul's focus. It wasn't Peter's focus. And I, I forget the other disciple he named, but it wasn't their focus. Their focus was on Jesus and what he could do, the healing he could bring, the salvation from sins. That was our fo That was his focus, and it should be our focus. We needn't worry about the end times. We needn't. We don't need to rely on preaching about the end times and using that fear to motivate people into accepting Christ because that's not going to work. What we need to do is preach God's grace because it's God's grace that's going to draw them in. It's, it's that grace that we all desire to have because deep down we all know that we've sinned. We all know that we've done wrong because of God's, because of our God-given conscience. We all know that we've wronged God and we desire that grace. We desire that mercy. And there's a dying world out there that needs, that needs us to tell them, Jesus died to take your punishment that you deserve so that you can have mercy, so that you can be in heaven with God forever when the time comes. Our focus isn't, shouldn't be when, trying to figure out when that day is coming. Our focus should be, you know, preaching the good news, the gospel of grace, before that day comes, whenever it is. Can end time preaching sometimes be helpful? Should it be talked about? Sure, why not? Because it's an, it's an important part of, you know, the whole gospel story. It's an important part of the Bible. But it shouldn't be our focus when we're out witnessing. We shouldn't spend time worrying and trying to calculate a day that Christ told us we're not going to know anyway until it comes. God has made it to where only he knows because... Even though it's important, it's not important to it's 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 not important to our mission. It's not for us to know. It doesn't it doesn't matter to our mission. What matters is preaching Christ to a dying world. And I hope that you guys, uh, I hope this uh, has blessed you somehow. I hope it's given you food for thought, and I hope it's calmed your fear. Because I know a lot of Christians out there are deathly afraid of the end times but I'm here to tell you you don't have to be if you're a Christian you've got nothing to fear of that day when it comes it's just a matter of going out and telling this dying world about the good news of what God has done for you and what he can do for them as well and for those of you out there who haven't been saved yet I pray that you, I pray that it happens for you I pray that you'll repent, that is to change your mind about God, change your mind about your sins, realize that God exists, and realize that you have done wrong, that you have sinned against God, and change your mind about your own righteousness, realizing you have none, and then placing your trust in the righteousness that Christ died to give you. Jesus is the guy, well, in, in, in this court analogy, Jesus is the guy who paid your fine even though you're guilty because he paid your fine the judge which is god in this analogy he can let you go 
because your fine has been paid. It's the same concept here, except so much bigger. Because it's, it's your eternity. And Jesus literally died, taking the wrath of God for you. But he rose from the dead as proof, as the receipt of your justification. He bought you with his blood. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to know. Anyways, guys, I hope this has blessed you. I hope it's given you food for thought. I hope to see you in the next one. God be willing. God bless you all.